Hello and welcome to Books and Beyond. I'm your host, Jimmy Bennett. Uh, usually my show is about helping people personify their aspirations uh, with creative endeavors, but this week uh, and during the COVID crisis here, I've been kind of gearing my show toward helping people cope and get through things and uh, understand what's happening around town. And today I've got a very special guest, Chris Regan, an old friend of mine, who is the property manager of the Old Mystic Village and owner of Regan Enterprises. Uh, Chris is here to talk to us about uh, reopening the village and getting things back to normal. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, Jimmy. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, you're welcome. So, what are your uh, so what's the what's the plans now? Are you guys going with the May 20th opening? Uh, yeah, we're gonna open up on May 20th. Uh, we're gonna do normal business hours, 10 to 6. Um, we have the restaurants right now that are doing curbside takeout. Uh, and then on the 20th, they're gonna be able to do outdoor dining. Um, you know, I know Go Fish is gonna do it on their, on their porch. Uh, Mangoes is gonna do it on their patios outside. Um, and then we have uh, Pink Basil um, is going to uh, do something on, in regards to their patios outside. I'm not sure exactly what it'll be. Uh, Blue Squid's gonna open up, uh, I believe, on June 1st and have outdoor seating. We're taking some of the pathways to put some um, some tables out so she can have more uh, patrons and we're making it uh, an, en an entrance and an exit only um, uh, flow so that uh, you don't basically social, you'll be able to social distance uh, from, from each other. Um, and that's, you know, one of the biggest things that every business in there has to get DCD, uh, Department of uh, Economic Development. Uh, they have to get certified. It's self-certification. And they'll put their signs on their doors or their windows of their store. So they meet the protocols of what the state is requiring for them to uh, open up. Um, and the exact same thing, uh, was perfect timing for us, is that we have brand new bathrooms inside the village. Uh, we probably have the best bathrooms uh, on 95. Um, but in, in regards to the bathrooms, we modernized it and we have more stalls than we had in the previous uh, bathrooms. And uh, we have automatic flush on the toilets, automatic flush on the urinals. We have uh, touchless on the uh, hand soap um, and we got blow dryers. So there's no, you don't have to touch anything uh, other than uh, just the door handle on the, um, on the stall. Um, other than that, uh, they're brand new and uh, they're, we're pretty proud of them because they're, uh, they're state-of-the-art bathrooms, um, which uh, was probably one of the biggest complaints we've had because the bathrooms that we had before were 47 years old. And right. so, you know, it got a lot of use, get a lot of uh, buses coming off the highway uh, that, you know, to just constantly, we were the rest area. And the beauty is now we have it inside the village. That means they got to come in and go through our village to come to use the bathrooms. Oh, okay. So where are they located now, Chris? Uh, they're located right next to Kitch near the meeting house. Yep. Um, near the duck pond. Uh, the old ones were out on the outer perimeter. So it was right. easy for people to pull up and, and, and jump out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, so, you know, the one thing that we won't do is like in the bathrooms, we have um, water fountains and the water fountains will be turned off um, because right. that would be something that, um, you know, could transmit um, the virus if, if, if it was ever any being affected. Um, yeah. so, you know, and, and plus, I mean, you just got to be careful. I mean, I, we've had a lot of people uh, throughout the past 60 days bring down their kids, their families, uh, their dogs, and they're walking around and everybody's respectful of each other's space. So it hasn't been an issue. Um, so it's been kind of neat. And during this time, uh, the theater, uh, I believe it's going to be the 26th of June, maybe 27th of June, is probably going to reopen around that time. Um, but during this time right now, they are um, renovating. So they're taking out their old luxury seats that are about four or five years old, and they're taking those out and putting in new ones that are fully reclinable, and they are heated seats. You're um, kidding me. No. Wow. Yeah, so these are, it's going to be a state of the art. It's going to be 
probably the best luxury um, theater in that I know of that can serve beer and wine and, you know, the amenities um, in the state. Now, you see, I was wondering about that. So they are going to reopen. That's great. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they definitely. I, I, you know, you think about movie theaters being real close proximity to everybody. Yeah. You know, you see everybody's next to each other. You know, I didn't think uh, – I didn't know if they would or if they would make you sit every other seat or, you know, like yeah. they're trying to do on airplanes and stuff now, you know? Well, I think, I think if you book, I, th I think what will what, end up happening is I think if you come in with a family and you say there's five or six, so you're going to have to do reserved seating. They're going to be able to do it online. So if you're a family of six, you can sit all together and then it's going to have um, uh, the two end seats next to you blocked off so you won't be able to sell them. Oh, all right, good. So they'll they'll be social distance that way. Oh well, that's that's I'm excited about that. I, that's one of the things you kind of miss is uh, actually going to the movies. Yeah, no, I know. Well, the um, one thing we might be doing, we're we're in discussions right now of possibly doing a um, um, drive-in theater. So oh. having screens put up, and then we'd have social distance with the cars. And then have the restaurants be able to deliver out to the cars. Hey, that'd be great, Chris. That's, oh, yeah. that's so a great we'll see idea. If we can pull it off, but that's uh, that's one idea we have right now that we're in discussions on trying to figure that out. We've uh, been uh, watching the protocols of Man uh, Mansfield Drive-In Theater. Yeah, what they're doing. So we're we're trying to see how we can make that work at the village. Yeah, I heard Ms. Mansfield and uh, Musquamagat, I think, is going to um, do a drive-in movie this weekend. Yeah. I think they're yeah. going to show Jaws. Yeah, Jaws, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, which is, a, you know, it's a great idea. At least it gets you out. Um, people, I mean, people are going stir crazy. I, I think they'd be happy to get out, even if it's just to sit in the car and watch a movie, you know. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things that, that the theater will be able to do is that they'll be able to show something that's fairly recent. Uh, right on the screen. So uh, right now we're getting quotes on it. One's a 40 foot screen. It's big. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That but, sounds uh, great. Yeah. No, it's, but you know, for the past 60 days, we've been working on the village, you know, and, you know, obviously for us on the, on the maintenance side of it, it's tough when, when this, we're in peak time because you got to watch out for all the tourists that are walking around you right, right. now. You know, we're, we're um, you know, painting buildings, uh, replacing windows and siding and um, right now we're in the process of planting 14,000 flowers and installing 140 yards of mulch. Wow. Uh, yeah so uh, hopefully by the 20th we've got most of that done. Right. And, um, you know and, and, and we want to make the grounds look great and have people get outside and enjoy uh, being outside because uh, being uh, you know uh, held up in your house in the bunker um, for that period of time, people are, are going to be stir crazy right now. Well, I have to admit, you know, I go by there every day, you know, on my way to work, you know, and I have seen you guys out there working hard. And I thought, well, I always thought it was a good thing. I thought, well, at least they're not letting the grass grow and things looking shabby. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's important to keep your spirits going. You know what I mean? Try to keep things uh, looking as good as possible. Um, yeah. Well, it's so, like, you know, it's like, well, it's like with the, um, uh, with Stefan from mangoes, he's been doing really well with the, uh, the curbside, um, pickup and then the, the donut, uh, deviant donuts. Oh my God. He's, yeah. he's been selling out on those almost every single day. It's phenomenal. Wow. And, he, and you know, people, they get in the parking lot and I've, I, I, you know, the amount of cars that show up for that is phenomenal. Yeah. Because, you know, they had the um, uh, dinosaur theme uh, donuts that they were making. I mean, it's just insane. And wow. uh, yeah, a lot of families showing up with kids and they're all standing in line waiting their turn to get their donuts. And it's amazing. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I, I was, you know, I, I don't, I, I obviously don't want to get too uh, in depth, but have you had you must have had some serious problems with these people with you know a lot of the shops and everything being closed down for two months now yeah i think more of it's 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 tough to because it's the unknown i think that's uh one of the biggest problems that 
as a business owner, it's what the future looks like. And, you know, when you're, you're used to your norm gets turned upside down, um, it's emotional. It's like everybody. Everybody's going through the emotional wave. You know, there's days that you're up, there's days that you're down, and you're just try- you want to get back to normal. Right. Uh, and I think, um, you know, for the most part, you know, we've, you know, talked to most of the tenants, uh, trying to help them through it. And, um, and, and, you know, and you have to work together um, right. to, to, get, to get to the other side of this. And, um, you know, and I, and I think um, the village is situated um, pretty well because it's not your typical shopping center. It's not your typical mall. It's not massive crowds coming into a store, you know. Um, so that's the beauty of it because it's an open, it's a sense of place. And that's what we've always said. It's a sense of place that people feel comfortable to walk around with their dogs or kids. Um, and at the same time, you know, we've got some great stores in here. And I think, um, I think it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be a good um, rest of the year for us. I, I yeah. really believe that. Well, one, one great advantage I think you have, like you pointed out, you're not an indoor mall, you're outside. I think that's going to give people a lot better sense of, uh, of being a little safer. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You feel so much safer outside than you do inside in, yeah. during this crisis, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and you, it's easier to keep, keep your distance a little bit more too, you know, as long as people are respectful. And, um, now, do you have, are you setting up protocols for customers? Are you going to require everybody to wear a mask if they go into the um, We're going to, I mean, in regards to walking around the village, I mean, obviously, if you don't feel safe, then you're going to put it on. Um, but we're going to have A-frame signs with what the protocols will be at the entrances of them walking into the village. Um, but in regards to the stores, uh, it's whatever the state protocols are required. So right. those are always changing. So, you know, we have to be very, um, what would you say, laser focused in regards to what the regulations are and, you know, we'll follow. Um, right. At the end of the day, we don't want anybody to get sick. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, we haven't had the massive outbreak uh, in our area as Fairfield County or New York City um, because I think we have a lot of distance between us uh, in our area because we're not necessarily big big cities right um you know it's uh, people who live on three or four or five acres um or an acre um uh, but they're not there's not a lot of high rises and you know people on top of each other in our area right so which is yeah i mean we've been we've been very fortunate in this area um yeah hopefully by the time you know i mean i don't know nobody knows i don't think the even the experts don't know really what's going to happen with this uh, yeah. You know, they're talking about the warmer weather might kill it or hold it down. Uh, you know, other people are screaming resurgence. You know, what I mean, uh, so I, I, I don't think that I don't think anybody's got a crystal ball, and anybody can tell you one way or the other. I yeah. mean, we're obviously just going to have to be as safe as possible and yeah. uh, and try to. But we have to we have to get back to life. We can't we can't hold up forever. Yeah. Uh, well, and, what I what I would want to see is. Um, them get to the uh, point where they can do uh, the restaurants at 50% interior. Right. Um, I mean, I think we should be at that right now, personally. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, I mean, the governor's got to make his choice of wh- how he's going to roll it out. And, you know, obviously we're happy that retail is able to open up on the 20th and outdoor dining. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, you have a, um, uh, weather problems with outdoor dining. So right. if, you, if you don't have a tent, that means if it rains or if it's windy, uh, if it's cold, are they going to come out? You don't know. And that's right. I think the biggest problem is for business owners on the restaurant side is, you know, what, what's the, are you going to bring back your full staff? Probably not. You're going to bring back a portion of your staff, but if they don't have hours because of rain, um, then, you know, they're, they're going to be uh, struggling a little bit. So yeah. I think we can get back to 50%, you know, and I think they should take the restaurants, anything that's like 2,000 square feet and above. I mean, perfect example is the steak loft. You got 14,000 square feet with 350 seats. I think, you, I think they can social distance inside there. 
Right, yeah. Uh, yep. you know, if, even if he had 170 seats in there, you know, it wouldn't look as busy, but they'd be able to do some business and, and you know, the employees could, you know, uh, earn a living. Uh, right. Other than, you know, sitting back and wondering what the future is going to hold. And, you know, and it also will get us back to a little bit of sense of normalcy. Right. Right. I've, uh, you know, that's been a big part of, uh, I've, I've been trying to do that a lot, even with my show, uh, promoting, um, I promoted a Mother's Day challenge to get people to go do takeout for Mother's Day. Yep. Um, and, it, you know, well, a lot of people are trying. We're trying to help support the local businesses. Um, and they all appreciate it. You know, um, now, Earlier, you said what was the what was the uh, organi- uh, the the commission, the Connecticut uh, for reopening oh, the people that are going to establish the guidelines. Department of Economic Development. Uh, oh, okay. That's that's who basically is implementing uh, the certification. So what happens is the businesses have to go online and get self certified, and once they get self certified, they print out a certificate that they've basically been certified. Um, okay. Like part of the self uh, certification is, are they going to? Uh, will they, uh, will they be a li- uh, limiting how many people are allowed in the store at one time? Yes. That kind of thing. Yes. So okay. so so in 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 the retail sector, um, is uh, it's sixty square feet per person. So if you have a three thousand square foot location, um, you're able to have um, fifty people. But at 50% of that, now it's 25. And then you take out your employees. So if you have two employees, you're allowed to have 23 customers in it. Okay. So, well, yeah. that's, you know, that's still, uh, for, for the Mystic Village, I mean, I think that's good because you can sort of wander around if one place is full at the moment. Yeah. You know, you can go somewhere else and then, you know, uh, try again. Um, I, I know it must have been a challenge for a lot of these people to keep uh, – I mean, they're sitting on inventory. They're sitting, well, I was actually, I keep thinking about Annie with her shop with the uh, plant boutique. I mean, she's had to keep all those plants alive, right? Or how's she, how's she dealing with all that? No, she, she, well, that, um, well, now she's planting flowers out in the village. Okay. So she's doing the 14,000 uh, flowers are planting with the Oh, you got her, you got her working, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um but no it's um you know i mean put it this way if you had perishables it'd be tough uh, yeah you know and um i think um i i i feel very positive uh for the third end of the third quarter and into the fourth quarter i think it's going to be a good year i think we're going to get a lot of visitors that are going to come out to our area especially in eastern connecticut with the 41 towns because we have a lot of walking trails. People are going to be looking for more outdoor activities. Um, you know, Seaport's going to have their, they're going to be open. Uh, won't have their, um, uh, st- you know, the mus- their exhibits inside open. Um, and same with the aquarium. So you still can go walk around. I mean, it's funny, on, on Mother's Day, I brought my mother back. Um, I, I called her up, said, what are you doing today? And I said, you know, do you want to uh, go for a walk? And I haven't done this in years. And we went down and walked. We went to downtown. We walked across the bridge and went down, uh, went down uh, Pearl Street and walked River Road. Oh, okay. Pearl, Pearl Street is where we grew up. As yep. kids. And then we went back and took a drive through Mumford Cove. Nice. So, you know, but it's, um, but I think a lot of people are um, experiencing a lot of things because, uh, I think their pace of life slowed down a little bit. Right. So basically open up their eyes that, you know, their pa- their pace of life is a lot faster before, and now they're trying to enjoy a lot more things, um, and which is good. I think it's great. And I think uh, Eastern Connecticut has a lot to offer for anybody that's living here or that's a visitor. And, um, you know, I mean, like the quiet corner, uh, you know, they have 57 miles of biking trails. And that's, I, I had no idea about it. No, I didn't either. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's up, uh, there's seven different towns that it goes through up in the north, and they call it the quiet corner in Connecticut. Yep. And, um, you know, and that's, 
that's something I've lived here. You've lived here your entire life. I didn't even know about it until no. on the, I'm on the tur- uh, Eastern uh, Regional Tourism District. I'm on their executive board. And, you know, once being on that board, it started to open my eyes to what our area really offers. And it's right. stuff. So I think yeah, it's... Yeah, I, I agree. There, there is... There is I, I have found, even doing my show, I've done a few uh, places. Uh, there was a place in Ledger, the Nathan... Uh, Nathan Hale, how uh, Nathan yep. Lester House and stuff like that, and you go up and it's these gorgeous pieces of property with all sorts of hiking trails, biking trails, exhibits, you know. And you're like, wow, I I passed this place 500 times in my life, you know. I and never really never went up the driveway and saw what it was. Oh, um, a perfect example is Eugene O'Neill Theater. I sat on a panel, and the executive director was telling me that they had four um, different theaters there of different sizes. The biggest one has 240 seats. And then they go down to like, I think 50 or 60 seats. And after the performance, they have a pub on site that you can go sit there and drink with the actors. I had no idea. I didn't know that. No, I know. But see, that's a lot of the stuff that we don't know what happens in our area. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm going to have to change that a little bit. And I think Um, that's what you should do. (laughs) Now, I mean, have you lost any? Have you lost any tenants and stuff over this? Um, we lost one. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. Um, I was, you know, I, I don't want to get into specifics, yeah. but I just was. Uh, I was wondering. Yeah. I mean, there's so many places that have closed down. You know, I heard the Bartleby's just closed, and you know, the Green Marble closed in Mystic, and a yeah. few places that just well, been around for a long time. You know, uh, I have one that's leaving, and I just signed a new lease. Um, I can't tell you yet who it is, but, nope. um, but we have a lot of activity. I mean, there's a lot, I'm, I've always got stuff that's going on. You know, like in Groton, I'm, I'm, I'm getting prepared to, uh, hopefully sign three leases. Oh, so, nice. So there's activity. Uh, there's a people, there's a lot of people out there looking for opportunity. Right. Um, you know, cause there's, I mean, it's our new norm is going to be different. Right. You know, and, um, I'm excited. I, I'm excited for our area, personally. I think with EB, I think once the casinos get back online, um, I think we have something that people are going to want. And I think you're going to see a lot more travel from New York and Boston to come here. Right. Because we're the considered country compared to Boston and New York. Right. Right. Um I don't know. I imagine that'll cause some some concern and stuff. But I mean, eventually we're going to have to just open up again. You know what I mean? We're going to have to to yeah. get back to you know get back to business. It's well, not the big the big thing was everybody talked about flattening the curve, right? And I think they flattened the curve because you see the the decrease in the hospitalization and and in, in the infections, right? And um, that was the biggest thing that they were looking for. And then it's a matter of when do you turn on the spigot for the economic purposes? Right. Um, you know, and that's the balancing act that the, the opening committee and, and the governor have to, you know, balance because at the end of the day, you know, the state of Connecticut, it's a business and yep. if they're not getting the revenue. What happens? Right. They're gonna, either going to be taxed based on the individuals or they're going to try to tax the businesses. And I right. think if you try to tax the business right now, you're going to see a lot of businesses go away. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I think there's a balancing act that has to be done. And yep. hopefully uh, our legislators make the right choice because that's, um, that's probably one of the biggest um, decisions in their lifetime and our lifetime is going to be is how do they handle it and how do they get themselves out of this debt? Because right now what we're hearing is that there's a potential $7 billion deficit in the state yep. of Connecticut for, in 2023. Yep, that's that's uh, scary. So I mean, well, I, I mean, I'm glad that I'm glad that you, I'm glad to hear that you guys are going to reopen that you've you've held in there. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Lisa and Corey Bailey, with uh, I Naturally, uh, their soap shop, uh, they were all excited. They get they got deemed an essential business, so uh, yep. they were moving along and stuff. Um, now there probably won't be many events coming up this summer, though, huh? Now we're gonna no, not during the summer. We're, uh, th- I think the first event's gonna be possibly the uh, garlic fest in September. 
Um, then it'll lead into the holiday carnival and then the luminary night. Uh, we just got to see what the protocols are, you know, yep. and hopefully that uh, uh, our wave uh, is flattened, you know, on the, on the coronavirus. And if it's flattened down, then, you know, I could see us having the events. Well, I'll be there at the Growlick Fest with my, uh, with my camera. I well, would uh, love to have you there, event, Jimmy. You know, um, that was a lot of fun last year. Um, yeah. That's I, uh, Yeah. I, you know, I, of course, we'll get, get the word out. Hopefully, you know, it's too bad. I'm mean, you know, going to miss a lot of the things like the artist festivals and stuff like that you had. Yeah. Uh, Taste of Mystic. Um, but, I mean, it's just a, just what, something we'll have to deal with. You know, maybe we can uh, figure something out. As a, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be some new stuff that's going to come out that, yep. that are going to be scaled down to make it safe for the, the public. Right. And, yeah, I'm sure there'll be some type of events, but it's just a matter of uh, they're going to be on a smaller scale. Well, if nothing else, I mean, it's a beautiful place to go spend the day, to yep. walk around. You've got plenty of food choices, uh, a lot of great shops, a lot of wonderful people, and great scenery. The ducks all made it, I, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what it is, you know, the, 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 like uh, when people bring their dogs down, yeah. my mother always talks to all the dogs. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's like, welcome to the village. And she go, and she's always talking to the dogs. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. And I'm glad, to, I'm glad everything's going all right with you. I mean, you're, you're hanging right in there. Um, Absolutely. You know, you got to give my love to Anne. Um, I haven't Absolutely. seen her in a while, but, uh, you know, can't wait till she reopens. Uh, you know, yeah. get moving. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for being on today. I'm, I'm glad. Um, I, I think that a lot of people were interested and wanted to know what was going on in the village. Yeah. Uh, it I is appreciate such a big, you having me on. It's such a big part of Mystic. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's just a big part of and our we're, lives. You know what we're, I mean? We're, bo we're both born and raised here. And right. You know what? We got a lot of history here. And I think, uh, you know, it's like when I walked down Pearl Street. All the memories just popping up of all the different stores. Yeah, my mother used to, my mother used to uh, run the bowling league for the Mystic Community Center. And right. Yeah. Three hundred and fifty kids in the bowling league in downtown. Wow. Uh, yeah, I even have a trophy from it. There you go. <laughs> well, that's a, I guess that's about all we got for today, Chris. Uh, we're out of time. Um, I will be talking to you again shortly, soon. Um, I right. hope everything, uh, you know, everything works out well and. Uh, I'll be down in the village as soon as you reopen, take a walk around, see how things are going. Okay. All right. All right. Look forward to it. Take care. Stay All right, buddy. You be good. Take care. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah,